This morning, the Associated Press is reporting that British actor Dave Prowse, who played Darth Vader in the original Star Wars trilogy, has died. Director George Lucas is said to have asked the six foot six tall Prowse to audition for the role because of his height. Now, this morning, Mark Hamill, who of course played Luke Skywalker, tweeting, calling Prowse a kind man and saying, quote, he loved his fans as much as they loved him. Dave Prowse was 85. Wow. And he was a former yeah. bodybuilder. That, that towering, imposing figure just added to Darth Vader, perhaps the most recognizable villain in film history. He will be missed for sure. <laughs> is a complicated profession. Welcome in to the Carbonite Chronicles, presented by the Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century. This show is dedicated to reviewing the Disney Plus mega hit, The Mandalorian. I'm Matt. I'm Jared. And I'm Mike. Woo-hoo! Chapter 14, The Tragedy, which I think refers to, if I'm not mistaken, John Favreau and Dave Filoni not getting stewardship of the Star Wars franchise before the sequel started. <laughs> they should have started the episode with, did you ever hear the tragedy of Filoni and Favreau <laughs> not getting control of Star Wars? <laughs> it's not a tale Disney would tell you. <laughs> Uh, I, I think we just dive right in, guys. We, yeah. we should get started. So Let's we should warn it. everybody. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, you know, rest in peace. Spoiler monkey. Yeah. I just want to say to our fans, to the three of you, that I do not condone what happened last week to the spoiler monkey. I thought that was... I, I, I just don't want PETA up our rears. First rule of Carbonite Chronicles is we don't speak about Spoiler Monkey. Okay, well, I've got, uh, I, I'm trying a new Spoiler Elf. I'm going oh, back to the Elf. Holiday Spoiler Elves. Yeah, okay. so. I haven't met this uh, Elf yet. Okay, well, uh, hang on a second. Uh, I'm going to have to turn my Zoom camera off so you can't, s he's a little shy. So, um, <clears throat> hey, Spoiler Elf. Yes. <laughs> Hey, uh, I think it's time we need to hit that, uh, that spoiler alert for the, uh, Mandalorian. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, Let's do it. All right. Uh, okay, hold on. so, hold on, hold on. what's wrong? <laughs> what? Let's get the zoom <laughs> camera back on for a second, please. Uh, all right. Okay, it's on. Can we, can we pause here for a second? No. No. You didn't get a spoiler off, did you? No, it's uh, he's real. He's not real. He is. You said hey, you had one on has, order. Has, you didn't get him yet, did you? Someone, you just dipped your head out of the shot. Is someone saying I'm not real? <laughs> this isn't this is unacceptable. What? We didn't off spoiler monkey for you to fake a uh, spoiler elf. Come on. Hey, what are those guys talking about? <laughs> All right, Scott. You know what? I don't care. I'm hitting. I'm hitting it myself right now. <laughs> no wait. <I> <laughs> All right. You know what? I don't think you thought through the murder of your spoiler monkey if you weren't prepared for this. I don't care what you guys think, but speaking of murder, my goodness, <laughs> there was a lot in this episode. Oh, well, well, well. Take uh, us take us through it, Matt, and let's break down all the good nuggets. I mean, before we begin, Honestly, the, where where the show is taking Star Wars fans is is just where they want it to go. 
unprecedented. I mean, it's just unbelievable that we get to see this stuff. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This episode is giving Star Wars fans everything they wanted. In fact, Jared has tattooed on his shoulder the icon of his youth, Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit, which which is going to yes. appear in one of the Mandalorian episodes. No, but for for Jared, for you, this had to have been just a, a reckoning of Star Wars. Oh, I remember the old Marvel comic where they first brought Boba Fett back from the dead. It was a, a book, a story called Jawas of Doom. And it never occurred to me up until reading that comic book that Boba could have survived somehow. But the the idea was fascinating to me. And then in 1992... Dark Horse Comics brought him back in the Dark Empire series, and he was back for real, or as real as it got back in the early 1990s for Star Wars. And people just assumed from that point on, somehow Boba Fett survived. And we got a little tease of that at the beginning of this season of The Mandalorian. I mean, there was a, there was a need for that. I mean, Jedi, yeah. Jedi left you with an incomplete feeling on one of their coolest if not most mysterious characters in the entire franchise and i think every fan believed that boba fett kind of got done a little wrong if yes. in a perfect movie that was the the imperfect part of it mike you said something that was that was quite profound and wise you said that boba fett has now finally earned the reputation people have just bestowed on him for the last 40 years yeah, very true statement. To be honest, up until what we saw in this episode, Boba was cool looking. There's no doubt about it. He was a cool looking character, but he never did much in the the films he was featured in. Uh, guys, I'm going to dive right in. So the episode starts with uh, Mando and, and Grogu. Uh, cruising into uh, to orbit of the planet, and uh, Grogu, we see him playing with the little shifter ball. I love the him Mando. Just it's like he's so like it's like a new toy. No one is there. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's Grogu. Like, Grogu. He found a new new feature on a toy he had for a while. And, and I, I want to say excited. that that opening scene is like you know everyone like loves Pedro Pascal, or whatever. I mean, I think he's fine. But I think that scene right there between with him has like really sold me on him because I just thought his performance in that scene was it, it like he wasn't trying to be um, like like stern, you know, because, you know, because the, the Mandalorian has that really funny way of talking like, you know, I have to take him to his people, you know, like almost like a caveman. And he, he's he was, loosening up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I really that that scene was just really terrific yeah so so he he takes the the shifter ball away from from grogu and he's like he's like come on you can do it he's trying to get him to use his force powers to grab the the ball again which he does which he's like yeah, yeah, yeah he's to like which, real proud to which he says again dank ferric dank ferric and uh and he scares baby yoda or grogu and drops the ball and he looks all indignant like you know what Fine, I'm not gonna touch the ball. No, I like, think no, he no, thought no, he was, I didn't, yeah, it was yelling I, at I him. I didn't mean to scare you. I didn't mean to scare you. Here's the ball. You're doing and, good. Uh, You're doing good. Very tender moment. Very <laughs> tender moment. It looks great. And uh, they pull into orbit. The Razor Crest cruises down with a beautiful, beautiful scene. I mean, it's like this stuff is is beyond yeah. any movie quality that and you've ever seen in Star Wars before. To my great surprise, they're already at Tython. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There wasn't like a 15 minute like. Oh, okay, we'll yeah, do this. Boom. Not to mention. We'll search in a, the records. In a planet full of things. Uh, here we go. He finds the the three hundred square foot uh, temple pretty <laughs> quick and goes right to it and does a nice little circle. And reasons that the Razor Crest is too big to land at that site and he has to land further away. So they're going to travel the last bit with the windows down. Now, real quick, I want to I want to take a moment to address something because uh, there's some different video commentaries on YouTube we watch. 
and some Jared doesn't like, but I get a kick out of. But they pointed something out about this season that I think is uh, what makes sense is that um, they, whenever they like give reasons why the ship can't be used. Like in the first episode where he's like, I'll just get the ship and destroy the dragon. And he's like, no, 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 you can't do that because of this. And here's another thing where they they explain why the ship can't be near the place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what this is. This is the, uh, why didn't they take the eagles to take the ring? to Exactly. To that's so, that's a great analogy. Mm-hmm. They're kind of getting out of that. They're getting ahead of it. So, because, you know, there's always the grievers that are going to be like, you know, you're just going to take the razor crest. <laughs> well, so, well, you ain't going to be taking the razor crest anywhere. <laughs> we'll get to that. So, Spoiler things happen very quick. Spoiler alert. Yeah, things happen very quick at this point. Uh, they rocket pack, they jet pack up to the temple. Another great rocket pack scene. Yeah, every time he's on the jet pack, he looks great. Uh, he kind of scans this spherical little ball in the center of uh, the rock temple, and he puts Grogu on it and says, hey, Come on, kid, do your thing. And of course, nothing's happening. He's playing with a butterfly. And then our world as Star Wars fans changes forever. We hear a noise. <laughs> yes, that that diesel muscle Gutter car a- engine. We've heard it a long time ago, almost 20 years now. Yeah. And... uh We've heard it before that 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of the clear blue Tython sky, we see in a beautiful shot. I called this, by the way. You did. You see Slave One just coming in. And you're like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Now, I think at this point, though, the kid has already... um, and please forgive me for making a Jedi Fallen Order joke. The kid has already saved his progress. <laughs> Mike, you'll you'll know what this means. When he gets on the seeing stone in Jedi Fallen Order, you do this, and it looks just like saving your progress. <laughs> <laughs> because you go into this blue circle of light, and all that light shoots up. Anyway, so this, this process has begun now with the kid. And... Well, it's funny because it's like he keeps when he's like, "Hey, come on, do something, do something." Then he sees the slave one show up, and he's like, "Oh, we got to go." And he turns around, <laughs> and just as he turns around, and it's like activated. Well, that's just typical. And he tries to get him off the stone, and he can't break through the force barrier. It keeps pushing him. Away. Yeah, it pushes it back. So now I'll say too, this is something new as far as with uh, force stuff. How the force is interacting with well, the whole other thing people of, in the world like that. Yeah, that's it's almost like a. Cerebus from the X-Men, you know, Professor Xavier's... Oh, yeah, Cerebro. Okay, Cerebro, yeah, it's not Cerebrus. Some, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere the Force Buffalo is, is listening. That's right, that's right. But the Mando says, okay, well, I'm going to go see what this is about. You keep doing your, your blue Force thing, and... He scans the Slave One and sees a figure exit the ship. Something I noticed here, and it's funny because I wasn't even, even though I knew, I was still wasn't 100% sure, but they were on location. Oh, yeah. They were outside. I don't think there's any doubt they shot this but outside. I, I, was, I was genuinely like, are they outside? <laughs> I'd say that we'd be surprised to find that that. Part of, most of that was probably, well, I'd say some of that's most likely also in the studio. We probably couldn't tell what was and what wasn't. But there was definitely some some location shooting there. And it felt great. It, it, you could, it's, it felt like, honestly, before we get going here, it felt like a, like an old Star Trek episode. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. I would wager to bet a lot of Star Trek episodes were shot where they shot this. Yeah, I have no doubt. I like just watched uh, the episode Shore Leave of Star Trek, and, and now that you say that, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Yeah. Well, it's, but, this is shot in California, so... Um, but, I mean, this show, of of course, is uh, is very styled after Westerns, but this episode in particular had that true, like, Western, old-style feel to it in many regards. Mm-hmm. But as a fan, as soon as we see the Slave One in the sky, things start to happen very fast. Oh, yeah. And and as to process what's happening 
because you, you're, you're basically going like, ah, uh, yeah. you're so excited about what you're you're seeing. I, I almost can't like believe what I'm seeing as it's happening. And it's like, it's tough because as, as I'm just kind of processing it, the next thing happens and the next thing happens. And mm-hmm. they take you through this episode and it was only 33 minutes long, actually about with the end credits, probably about 31 minutes long, but it didn't feel like it was a half hour. It felt like much no, longer. You're right. It felt, and it did feel longer. It was just unbelievable. But anyways, Mando travels down the hillside and uh, tries to to find this figure, and uh, he's kind of pinned down by some some blaster fire pretty quick, and then the figure emerges. I've been tracking you, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah, Tamora Morrison. Uh, he has the very distinct way of speaking, and we get our first real look in broad daylight at uh, Boba and all his messed up features. Mm-hmm. I think he looks great. He's, you know, he's got scar tissue all over his bald head. He's, he looks like he, he sat in a pool of acid for a little while. And he's very straightforward about why he's there. I want my armor. And of course, Mando goes back to his standard. Uh, yeah, he he default defaults. answer. Yeah, you're not Mandalorian. Did you take the creed? <laughs> and Boba's yeah, but, just like, oh man, okay. But you, you get I a answer great, to no one. You get a great callback to Jango Fett at this point because, uh, yeah, he's you know, just he, a, Boba gives the 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 answer. Uh, I'm just a simple man trying to make my way through the galaxy. And also, which, I want to point out here again: this scene would not have worked without the prequels. Yeah, absolutely. Jango Fett gave Obi-Wan a very similar answer when Obi-Wan asked who he was. Jango answered, I'm just a simple man trying to make my way through the universe. Oh, so, and also yeah, we learn what's her face is now half cyborg. Oh, uh, yes, because... Well, hold on. We, we're jumping, you jumping the gun here. <clears throat> so Mando basically has him on a stand down. He's, he's got his gun pulled. Uh, Boba does not have his weapon pointed at Mando. He's wearing both the gaffy stick and the uh, rifle on his back. That's and a Tuscan Raider rifle, rifle, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Uh, he's gone native, and uh, he he kind of keeps that with him. But he basically says, he basically says, "Look, he's like, I'm not going to give you the armor in a sense. He's like, I can. What's t- stopping me from taking you down right now and dropping you? And he's like, I've got a sharpshooter above. Mando, of course, is like, look, I'm wearing Beskar. If I see that muzzle flash, I'm going to take you both out in two seconds. It doesn't matter to me. And then Boba drops the the line that he's like, he's not, she's, the person's not aiming at you, aiming at your little companion up there on the hill. And that changes the whole game. We do learn very quick that Mando is not after Grogu. He doesn't care. He just Boba, wants yeah. his stuff back. Right. Boba's not after Grogu. We, we oh, learn yeah. a lot about Boba Fett. Which, of course, we didn't have the opportunities in the original trilogy. Good God, we learned more about Boba Fett in this episode than in all six of those movies. Yeah. I mean, we find out immediately uh, through some quick dialogue that uh, the sharpshooter on the hill is none other than who we were kind of previewed at the beginning of the show, but Fennec Shand. And Fennec has a little baby Yoda in her sights. I don't think she could have penetrated that blue... Force field, yeah, I think well, I think he been... should have known that. Well, I don't think maybe they probably <clears throat> didn't know what was going on up there, but they're at a a, a Mexican standoff at the moment, and uh, Boba is the first one to be like, "Let's put down our weapons, mm-hmm. have a chat, and have a like, chat." Boba Fett comes across as very reasonable. He does, I, and you don't know because there's there's like a something inside me saying, "Well, he's just trying to trick him," but he's really not. Boba is kind of a straight shooter in this. Yeah, he's like, this is what I said, and this is what I meant. He's on the level. He is on the level. He's on the level. And I'll be honest, I really didn't expect Boba to be uh, on the level like that. I I kind of expected him to be tricky and devious in a sense, like Mm -hmm. a villain. I expect him to be a a villain. But we get to that later. Uh, So Fennec comes down. Everyone puts their weapons down. And... Mando was surprised to see Fennec. He's like, I thought he you were dead. He also takes his backpack off. He takes yeah. his jetpack off, correct, yeah. That was part of the deal. Uh, and we find out something about Fennec, how she survived her uh, encounter in the Tatooine Desert. Yeah, she she exposes... She has robot abs now. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And so I guess we we have the um, we Boba is is an expert at uh, installing robot parts into people's stomachs. I mean, that's, a, that's an over. That's like a whole her whole digestive system has been and, and replaced. I have to say, it, it doesn't. It doesn't look <laughs> like it's very um, uh, easy to maintain. It's not like a, a closed system. She opens up her like her tunic, and it's just like open gears and hydraulics that you could actually probably yeah. reach your hand in. It's not like even sealed. I yeah. can keep the dirt out of that. Now, I predict... What happens when you go swimming? I predict we're going to see a, a little more of, of what happened. Yeah, Maybe I'm sure we're going to Before this flashbacks. season is over about... Or that, how, or do you think they're going to save it for the show? I don't know. No, I'm... I'm I, look, the we're, we're going to find out. Is what I mean. We're spoiling everything here, so I'll just tell you right now that at the end of the show, they're all riding in one ship. So yep. I think we're going to have some conversation between the three of them uh, going forward. Yeah, but there's only two episodes left, man. I got a lot of ground to cover at this point. I don't care. If I find out what happened to Boba Fett and I see a flashback, it's worth it's worth a full episode. Which, one way or another, in The Mandalorian or elsewhere, y- you will see right. that. You're going to see it. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so everyone's having a chat, and... Something happens. The game changes again. Another ship. Here comes an Imperial drop ship. Full with of, full of those pesky stormtroopers. Yes. Stormtroopers. So they they team up immediately. Well, they make a deal. They yeah. make a deal. Boba said, if you give me my armor back, I guarantee your safety and the child's safety. Yeah. And that's they, they kind of strike a bargain. And as soon as the bargain struck, the drop ship emerges uh, from orbit and lands and here and come all hell breaks loose <laughs> oh yes there is this this following sequence is really amazing boba fett goes into beast mode basically something we did not know was something that could happen <laughs> he takes that gaffy stick and does things to those stormtroopers <laughs> Man. L- like something out of a, a horror film. Rex. <laughs> and Rex. And chunks. We see chunks of armor. I think we've only seen chunks of armor in the first Star Wars movie. When, when stormtroopers are getting shot. But he Tamora is... Morrison looks like a man possessed. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I mean, from stabbing them with the gaffy stick to destroying yeah. their heads. Let me tell you, there's one scene where where they start out and this is mid fight where He's walking up to a stormtrooper on the ground to finish him off. And the way the shot is, is he's dragging this heavy gaffy stick on the ground. And the camera's just on the, the edge of the gaffy stick following it. It's like out of a horror movie. It's yeah. straight out of a horror movie. Well, and, I love that one shot of the stormtrooper that he leaves <laughs> yeah, laying so on the all ground. Contorted. It's like yeah. his, his helmet is literally almost like cracked in half. Yeah, it's all caved it's in. Split at the face. <laughs> It's, oh, it's 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 a way is up at some I know. weird angle. It's a way you've never seen a stormtrooper before. Like in in his death <laughs> rip in his the way he's laying there is oh. really awkward and terrible. So, oh, we also get to see a stormtrooper with some colors on him. That's something we've not seen. Oh oh the with the yellow guy. Yeah. The, the mortar like the mortar trooper. Yeah. Yeah, that it was kind of very effective. No. Well, he he didn't he serve just to dislodge the giant Indiana Jones boulder? Hold or, on, I'm watching that scene right now. I think it was the uh, repeater, the E web. Well, yeah, they they set the E web down, and I, I'm literally looking at that scene like right this second on my phone. I mean, we see some great shots of Fennec, who's you know once again celebrating her sharp shooting ability. She's taking mm-hmm. troopers out left and right. Uh, Mando is a pure savage. Nope, you're right. It was the mortar. Mm-hmm. Mortar guy, uh, and then another drop ship emerges, and mm-hmm. it complicates things even further. So we've got double the yeah, troops on the ground now. Yeah, it gives Boba more stormtroopers to kill. So, <laughs> but right as that second ship touches down, we see Boba Fett by. Oh, I love the shot of the boulder just oh well rolling Bo- over the stormtrooper. <laughs> Boba Fett is he stops and looks over at the Razor Crest into the cargo hold mm-hmm. and he sees what he's looking for. And that's where we leave Boba Fett for now. And then we cut to uh Fennec and the Bando 
get start to get they they hold their own, but they start to get overwhelmed kind of quickly. And and you know at this point watching it, I think everybody knows What's we're about happen? to get a, a hero moment coming. A hero moment. I don't think you'd ever would have said that about Boba Fett in the original trilogy. I just want to say Tamora Morrison, because I just watched the scene where he looked at the ship, and I mean, he does not miss a beat. He comes right back to this role, and there's no warm up. I mean, he's like in it. He's he's there. He's doing it. Yes. Well, he's pure DNA of Star Wars, so it's it's great. And so then we we get well we we do have a cool um use of the whistling birds which i always enjoy seeing but um at this point there's just too many troopers but boba fett descends from the sky we see a grenade fall from the sky yes. and oh, boop, dee, dee, take out some boop, troopers dee, dee, dee. troopers kind of look up in the sky and jared i'll let you i'll let you take it from here so much happens so fast. It basically Boba wipes everybody out. <laughs> He's got the knee rockets. I've got so many books and everything that describe his armor, and knee rockets has always been on there. But I'm always, I was always like, well, how the heck are these things practical? How do these work? And we saw him. I mean, he he sits there. He kind of takes a knee and shoots a couple of troopers with the knee rockets. I'm like, okay, that's how they work. I like it. And at this point, the troopers that remain, and well, I do want to go back to what Mike said, where, where you know, the, Fennec uses the rock to take out a bunch of troopers, which was, you know, I think she got some help from her robot abs as she was pushing against the, uh, the rock with her feet. And um, yeah, that, so I, I want to, I definitely want to give props to that scene because that was... Uh, that was pretty awesome with the giant boulder just rolling <laughs> down the you've hill. you've seen stormtroopers running away from a I know, boulder. it's like, ah! <laughs> and, but, so at this point, all the remaining troopers uh, retreat. Yep, they're out And they, they jump back into their ships, which these ships look very similar to the ships from... The Force uh, Awakens. Yes, the, the stormtrooper ships. Um, so, Boba, which... We, we've seen we've seen Django use his rocket. We we've seen Cobb Vant use the rocket on the pack, but we've never seen Boba Fett shoot that rocket himself until now. And he takes out both transports with one missile. Amazing. And there's a great line where the Mandalorian <laughs> says, "That was a good shot," and he goes, "I was aiming for the other one." <laughs> well, actually, it's funny you said that because when you see his targeting, he puts down the uh, the antenna on his helmet, mm-hmm. and then you see inside his visor, and he targeted the left ship, but the right ship was was hit. And I'm like, "Oh, that's interesting." And well, that's then he a, called it out. That's a cool little detail. Yeah. But and I mean, he called it, it out. I'm like, "Oh, okay." It worked out it. because of where they were in the air. The it the the, the debris <laughs> from one hit the other, and they both went down. So those things job. are about as effective as the bombers in uh, Last Jedi. And I'd say they're still <laughs> infinitely more effective than the bombers. At least they put the troops on the ground. And then we lost a friend. We lost a we lost a friend. Oh man, that, that was a great shot. This was a genuinely surprising. I mean, this move this episode is full of surprises, but this again at the end of this battle, a, no. You get no rest at all. There's there's no time to take a breath. The Razor Crest is vaporized from orbit. You get a great like flash shot from above the clouds, a red flash, and then a blast comes through the clouds, destroys the Razor Crest. Yes. Wipes so the obviously the tracking beacon was helpful in this in this endeavor, but and you start to see a real uh, at this point at this part of the show. You start to get a real sense of a of a true partnership at this point between Fennec and Boba. They, uh, you know, I don't I don't put one over the other in a sense because the way they kind of interact and talk. Fennec immediately says, "Boba, you need you should get to your ship," and he blasts off and he goes, and mm-hmm. because obviously we want to get the slave one off the ground before it gets taken out. Yeah, and hey. uh, and he he gets in the ship and goes. And I just want to go then, back to this ship being destroyed real quick. Yes, it's funny because it took him 
this whole season. Of course. <laughs> to get that thing up and Pristine running. And shiny. <laughs> it's like brand spanking Listen. new. And there's that <laughs> thing. That too. And it, it ain't coming back. They, there's no, no amount no. of red lobster decoration that's going to bring this thing back at this all point. You, all you need is core going. <laughs> it can be a place for people of all kinds to come. It could be a safe haven. Oh no, there's oh, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> no, it's done. The the Razor Crest is a uh, history, part of Star Wars history at this point. But we cut to uh, we, we what's go, happening in orbit there. Yes, we go up to Moff Gideon's ship, and then we get another surprise. And he is he is ready to release those dark troopers that we heard about or that we saw a few episodes back. He even calls them dark troopers. Yeah, he's like yeah. release uh, the dark troopers. That's not how he says it. That's it, he doesn't sound cool. not even close. If he but, had, <laughs> it would be cool. So these things are, um, you know, awesome. I thought, I, you know, I thought immediately of Iron Man. When these things were coming down, they, they definitely uh, the Iron not, Legion, yeah, the the Iron Man vibe about these things. But mm-hmm. finally, at this time, the Force kind of releases Baby Yoda, and and he's 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 obviously again tired and stunned a little bit, so he's kind of lays down on the rock. And man, this poor kid. I mean, he can't catch a break, so. The dark troopers descend and grab him and head back up. And Fennec uh, calls out to Boba. Mm-hmm. We get a, says you got to you got to check this out. And Boba has them in his sights. Yes, with the slave one. We get uh, Boba back at the controls of Slave One. And you know, I I had a thought that you know maybe you know Boba better be careful because he is. He's flying straight up um, to the bottom of this of this cruiser, and the Imperial ship is in the is it's in the atmosphere, it's right. it's in the high atmosphere. So, so Boba is you know he's like okay I can take these out, and they're like no 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 don't hurt the kid. So he stands down, and he says oh they're back. They're like who he sees the ship as he emerges through the clouds. Yeah, and they're he's back. like. And Fennec Shan's, well, what are you talking about? He's like, the Empire. And then she's like, well, the New Republic controls this sector. And he's like, well, the Empire's here. He's like, this isn't a spice dream. I'm looking at it with my own eyes. Yeah, that's exactly what he cruiser. said. That's interesting that he said that, like the Empire, because he said it almost like, oh, crap. But, I mean, he was all buddy-buddy with the Empire. So I wonder what he doesn't, changed he, his he, attitude here. We learn that Boba doesn't give his allegiance to anybody. He is a true loner. Well, the, you know, and they were, to be fair, they the were his Empire, boss earlier. I mean, in yeah. the early films, they were his boss. So they were and paying him. I don't him. know his history of after Jango was, was off. I don't know how much, uh, you know, the Empire helped him out, given the, the legacy that his father gave yeah. the, uh, the Empire. But... We do know that he he has no love for the Empire, mm-hmm. and uh, it was kind of ev- so it was kind of evident when he he kind of delivered that line. He's like, "The Empire is back," yeah, and he didn't seem happy about it. True, so, but he bails off, and uh, the Dark Troopers do take Baby Yoda on board the ship. And, and they, the if only if Mando could fly after those Dark Troopers. Oh wait, he took his backpack off. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There's a lot going on, and the ship. Goes to hyperspace pretty quick. J- or Django. Um, Boba disengages. And, and he we goes cut down. to uh, Mando, who's standing in a crater. So we mm-hmm. should talk real quick about Boba Fett's look. Real quick. Mm-hmm. So Boba Fett has that warrior monk look going on now. because uh, With the robes. Yeah, Boba has been wearing... He's gone native and it has been kind of masquerading as a Tuscan, it seems, for a while, a few mm-hmm. years. And he kept the robes on with the armor. Yeah. So he's he's a robed and robed Boba. I, I like that look. I, I was saying that's that's an action figure that I, I would like to have. Mm-hmm. Um it's versus that traditional kind of like jumpsuit yeah. boba. And I and I like that it's not just I the mean same. it's not just the same. It's yeah. it's you know, and, and to be honest, you know, uh Tamora Morrison is is just he's a bigger guy than 
like Jeremy Bullock was oh, yeah. in the original trilogy. And, you know, he's thicker. And he's, so I think this robe look, it kind of, but, but he does fill out the armor better than Timothy Oliphant did. Yeah, that didn't work. Because <laughs> Timothy Oliphant was quite a skinny guy. And this, Boba's armor just, it just looked better on Tamora Morrison. I mean, the minute that Boba first stood up in the armor behind the trooper, Mike called it best. He, he was like, he was a beast. Yeah. He was a beast. Yeah. And he, he was like, it was like. He, Boba on steroids from the first trilogy. He, he looked imposing, whereas Timothy Oliphant looked like a kid who found his dad's Boba Fett suit. Yeah. I and would like to see them... Um, I think the material that the armor is on looks a little out of place. I'd like to see them... Like, maybe he takes that armor and kind of, like, reconfigures Repaints it. Repaints it, gets it back to normal. Well, I don't I don't think it needs to be repainted. I like the, I like the worn look of it. I'm just talking about that gray cloth that the armor... It's just kind of like out of place. Also, real quick, you know, you guys were talking about how he's dressed. When I first saw him at the end of that first episode, I thought that he had been wandering around tattooing, like like we'd said, like he'd gone native. Mm-hmm. But it's clear he has been getting around. Because yeah. he has his ship. So I'm just curious. Obviously, I'd like to see how he escaped. How did he lose his armor? And how did he lose track of his armor? I think. Yeah, I think, well, I'm hoping we get some of that in the next few episodes. Those are good questions, and we should circle back to that once the episode's over. So we pick up, uh, Mando is sifting through the crater that was the Razor Crest looking for stuff, and he finds uh, two things. He finds the best car spear that he got in the last episode, and he finds the shifter knob, and that seemed to be what he was looking for all along. You know, I have a feeling he'll be he'll be able to hand that shifter knob back to the kid at some point. And then we got another surprise. Boba's not leaving. When uh, Mando crawls out of the crater, uh, Fennec and Boba are standing there, and we learn something very, very cool about Boba Fett and Jango Fett at this point. Yeah, he's um, he says, you know, Boba to prove to the Mandalorian, he's like, this is my chain code. And there, he displays this holographic thing on his wrist gauntlet. And he goes, right here, this is my father. And he points to a lot of this unusual script. And But if you look, there's a lot of writing there. Yeah, Mando, Mando can read this script, by the way. This is familiar to him. Yeah, and he's like, this armor has been mine for, for 25 years. It was previously owned by my father, Django. But that that armor, based on the, the the chain code that he's showing him, it, it goes back quite a ways. Right. I was always wondering, did Boba get new armor, or was he using Jango's? And we yeah, learned that's, that's that, a good question. But but we learned that this armor was Jango's, and uh, obviously, it looks different. It's been repainted, but I think we can safely assume that this is what. Django was wearing in Attack of the Clones. Which was pure Beskar when Django was wearing it. It wasn't painted up. Right. And you're kind of seeing it with the the acid wash, the uh, Beskar shining mm-hmm. through now. The uh, sal- Sarlacc stomach acid yes, wash. Yeah, the Sarlacc yeah. juice. So, uh, <laughs> but, so Mando's like, the, the boy's gone. He's like, we're, we're, we're done. The baby's gone. And Boba, He's on like, the level, yeah. says... Our deal's not complete yet. I promised you safety and the the boy retur- the baby returned. And Boba's like, let's get to it. So Boba is, which makes me think, I have a prediction here, guys. I have a prediction. I don't want it to be true, but we'll see. So we got Boba back in the world, in the universe, but I don't know if we get to keep him. Mm-hmm. So the Razor Crest is done. And he, although I'd like at the end of this show to, to know that Boba is cruising around in the Slave One being Boba Fett in this universe. I'm not sure we're going to keep him. I wonder if we're going to lose Boba Fett in some heroic action and the Slave One will become Mando's. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I'll tell you what, to to get him back and then to immediately lose him. Well, that's uh, that's, a... I don't think we're going to lose him right away. (laughs) I think think we're going to see a transfer of... The slave one to Mando. The, that's, the, that's my guess. It definitely seems to be I, pointed. I hope in that I'm direction. wrong. I hope I'm wrong. 
but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I think you're right. He could be headed for a sacrifice. And it may be the blow will be softened by the announcement of Boba's series. Because apparently it's a it's going to be a mini series like uh, Obi Wan. It's going to be a one shot, one season deal with the Boba Fett show. But you know we'll see. That's it's like a not variety show. A variety that, show that, where that, that, Boba that. roller skates and falls down. Come on, we're doing the matchmaking <laughs> club. Where's Dengar? Dengar, come out here. Oh God. <laughs> well, okay. So well, I tell you what though, if they do this, if they kill Mando, in uh, not Mando, Boba. Then the series will have to be between Mando and Jedi, which means he will be Sans armor for the entire series. So well, well, well. That's something they want to do. I don't know. We'll see. You know, if there's a lot of places this could go, but let's uh, let's finish talking about the tragedy. Which the name of the episode when it popped up, I was like, wh- what? It's just the tragedy, and you're like, you, your mind goes a hundred places, like, oh, crap. And that's Yeah, that's, I got on Facebook right before I watched the episode, and I saw, that's like, a new episode, The Tragedy, and I immediately went, click, off. So, yes. <laughs> so we see some pretty funny stuff here. So obviously we know that the Dark Troopers took Grogu, and we now see oh. Grogu having fun with troopers in uh, his holding cell. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, there's the- something that happens before that. Okay. Oh yeah, of course you're right. Tell us he what go- that is. He goes back to uh, that planet where Apollo Creed lives. What's the name of that? Oh, planet? Navarro. He goes to Dave Navarro, and um, oh yeah, you're right. He and, uh, go- goes. I guess she's like. I guess she's officially with the uh, Alliance now. Yes. So we. Cara Dune is a New Republic marshal on that planet. Yes. Official. Which that's it obviously explains the badge she was given. And so so uh, she. I guess she accepted it. I guess. I didn't yeah, get she's that like, vibe. why is Mando talking to her? What does he want? He wants someone, an old friend from he wants, season one. He wants Bill Burr. Bill Burr, folks, is going to make an appearance again. He's putting the team together. I have a feeling and, each one of these, every season is going to end with him getting a team together. Dude, I think, and I think we're going to see Ahsoka, Boba, Bill Burr. This is, you know, like Mike says, this is this is the assembling of the team. Yeah. And I can't, you know, I can't wait to to see what happens. I wonder if he's going to go back to his buddy Cobb from the first episode. They're going to reactivate uh, IG-11. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, so they, he has Cara Dune run a, a scan to find out where Bill Burr's character, I can't remember the guy's name. It's uh, uh, Mayfeld. Mayfeld, where he is, and it, it kind of lists what his offenses are, where he's being held, and... Uh, I think he's like a fifty-year sentence or yeah. whatnot. But so they're going to do a jailbreak, obviously, on this guy. And that's Cara the next Dune episode: having, the jailbreak. Having a bit of a crisis of 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 character and job at this point, when she's like, "I can't participate in that," and he's like, "They've got the kid." So obviously, I think we're going to have Cara Dune join. Sure, this trip of course. As well. So we're going to have a whole bunch of people stuffed into the the slave one. Yeah, going to do a, a jailbreak. And you know, they're not all going to make it. No. So. Uh, so we jump back to Moff Gideon's cruiser where baby Yoda is just having <laughs> his time wrecking. of his life with two stormtroopers. And it's just, the, it's such a funny scene. And Moff Gideon is like, no, 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 let, let him, let him do it. <laughs> let him finish. And there's a reason why he's doing it. The stormtroopers, I mean, every time a stormtrooper gets up, Grogu takes one and smashes him in the other one. And it's like, it's just a com- like this comedic thing. And finally he just kind of wrecks them and they're just out cold. But there's a reason Moff Gideon is letting him. Uh, exhaust his force powers and get himself uh, tired out. Yes, because he knows, he's like, you get very tired, don't you? Obviously, you guys picked up on the on the comedic riff on the original uh, A New Hope here, but he shows the dark saber to Grogu. He's like, have you seen one of these before? Kind of hinting that he knows what it is. Mm-hmm. And Grogu reaches out to touch it, and Moff Gideon retracts the blade. He's like, oh no. He's like, he's like you're far too young for this. It says liable to put out an eye. Yes, which is a great callback to, of course, the Luke Skywalker holding the lightsaber for the first time and looking down the barrel with his Whoa. eye. I thought it was more of a Christmas story reference, but no, you'll, you'll shoot is, your eye is, out. This is Luke Skywalker looking at the barrel down the barrel of a lightsaber when he was first handed it. He, he's like, "You're a little too young for this. You're liable to put out an eye." So it's a fun little knockback to uh, to Luke Skywalker being uh, irresponsible or Obi Wan being irresponsible giving. A young Luke Skywalker, a lightsaber. 
Well, Moff Gideon's a jerk. He is a jerk. <laughs> he teases and, him. And and then they they stun him. They shoot him. The Those poor little bastards. guy. Time to take a nap. And, and then we see him in his little hand. They, they they give him the tiniest, cutest handcuffs I've ever seen. <laughs> And I'm like, that's pretty cool that they had those in stock. Yeah. They're like, here, bring the cuffs. And I mean, then I guess when you think about it, in a universe so so diverse with all these people, you gotta have like a storage unit of like, oh, what size do we need for this alien? Oh yeah. There's a lot of aliens. But so that's that's kind of where the episode ends, is we that very lonely looking little unconscious Grogu and you're Grogu. you're we're left waiting another week to find so, out what happens. So Boba Fett has made his Star Wars triumphant return in the best way that, in my opinion, could have happened. Uh, we saw more and learned more of Boba Fett's character than we ever did in the original trilogy or the prequels. And we find out that Boba's on the level. We, uh, It's a man of his word. Of, we have pushed the series uh, forward in a, a major way. The story is, is advancing. We know that Moff Gideon has contacted uh, Dr. Pershing and saying that we have the uh, donor... Mm-hmm. Uh, so things are really in motion now. I mean, we're right we're right at the the tail end of the series here. Only a couple episodes left, so I think we're going to see a lot squeezed in. I'm hoping for long episodes. Uh, yeah, and this has not this has been an exciting uh, season so far. I mean, it has been really really phenomenal. And well, I think we should also I, talk about who directed it. Oh yeah, Robert Rodriguez. No, I, that was a can't. surprise. Well, well no, it was a surprise and it wasn't. As soon as I saw his name, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, makes sense. he did a very, I mean, he he understands, you know, action and understands even Westerns very well. Yeah, but clearly he's a fanboy because, I mean, you know, he was just. <laughs> yeah, that jerk. He was just uh, <laughs> having like, a blast. He was like, look at these, I got Star Wars toys to play with. Yeah, I mean, he was he was recreating whatever he used to do in his backyard. I mean, come on. Imagine being the director that gets to be handed that script and say, you get to bring Boba back. Yeah. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? This is this is, this is is as much fun for these guys making it as it is for us to watch. I mean, they're having the time of their life with a budget, that an unlimited budget, and they're like, how do you want to make Star Wars? They're like, let's make it this way. And they're doing it right. The Mandalorian is, is not letting the fans down. This is everything that the sequels weren't. And to be quite honest, I, I almost... Don't even think about the sequels as existing at this point. I'm letting uh, I'm letting the Mandalorian bridge Star Wars for me, and and blaze new new paths and trails. Uh, this stuff is phenomenal. This stuff is phenomenal. Here's another thing about the Mandalorian. It again, it makes the prequels better. Yeah, it does. But you know like, what? The prequels and, were never bad. No, they just but were great. All these people, and and that's interesting because the the thing with the sequel trilogy is they were clearly trying to ignore the existence of the prequels. And I think they just got... They they, they had so much to build off of, and, and they just ignored it by repeating what had already kind of been done. And the Mandalorians were like, no, 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 no. No, no. That's not how you do it. And, the, like, without the prequels, we wouldn't have the Boba Fett we have in this episode. It's true. And look, I'm not going to uh, completely bash the sequels. There are some good stuff and there's some good stuff. And to be fair, this is kind of low hanging fruit to be able to step right off uh, just a couple years off of Jedi in the timeline mm-hmm. and give fans familiar stuff that they eat up. You know, they didn't have to span 35 years of, of time and try and say, well, how do we evolve the Republic? How do we evolve the universe mm-hmm. to kind of fit that time? I get it. That's a that's a task that is it's complicated and it was not exactly um it wasn't perfect. This is much easier, I think, for the fans to to delve into. It's all familiar stuff, it's all familiar looks, it's everything the fans want. And I get it, but at the same time, this is the Star Wars timeline that the fans wanted to see in the first place. This is the stuff that they love. Mm-hmm. So well, here's my hope that the Mandalorian will. Is it a new hope? Bay lay a bedrock that will somehow make the sequel trilogy better. I'm yeah. sure. We can we can circle back real quick before we wrap it up. You know, it, it makes you wonder, and I think I think we'll get this answer. But why why did Boba wait? You know, I, I think Boba could have gone into Cobb Vance town at any time yes. and just said, hey, give me my armor back. <laughs> I'm here for my armor. <laughs> I'll tell and, you what, I'll make you a deal. No, no deal. Just give me the armor. <laughs> it would have, you know, 
it would have been a lot easier than than jumping off world and following Mandalorian, who is a formidable warrior, to get his armor back. Now, now I do like I said, I think they're going to explain this, but right now it's um it's a kind of a thread that's dangling out there. That's a good point. The armor's obviously important to him. Obviously. And it was his father's. Yeah. So and we met in the prequels. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> yes, we did. So he's been on Tatooine for five years now. We we assume, but like my Matt said, he could have he's got still got the slave one. He could jump off world and do whatever he wants. But he waited until the Mandalorian had his armor to go after it. That's just a, yeah. that's an interesting question. I would like well, to know the same the time, answer to it. At the same time, Cobb Vanth, uh, he hadn't had that armor for five years. you know, And who knows how long the Jawas were rolling around with that armor. So, Well, let's theorize. Okay, so does the Sarlacc spit him out? Or does, something, does someone come looking for him? I think Boba has wrecked the Sarlacc. Yeah, he, he gets out. I think he wrecks it. I think he. I think he killed it. I think Boba. I think Boba killed the Sarlacc somehow. So all and those he poor people were left in the carcass <laughs> to slowly suffocate. <laughs> no, I think he does. I think he's going to be one of those epic, you know, accomplishments of. But Boba I think he's going to be injured, and then he, the the Jawas find him. I think it's going to be similar to how the comic was, where he gets. Yeah, out. I think he's going to he's going to fight his way out of the Sarlacc, and he's it's going to be he's, a. a He's going to be wrecked. Well, he he's obviously terribly burned. So he's going to look probably like Anakin when he crawls out of there. I think he's mostly naked, too, because he's only got, like, the upper portion of that armor. Like, only the stuff that couldn't be digested is pretty much the only thing that's left. He he probably takes the armor off because it, it's probably it burns! covered. It's, it's like covered in and acid. And he, he discards it and, you know, makes his way out of there. And then the Jawas come along and scavenge the wreckage of the sand, of the um, sail barge, and they take the stuff. And you know he may be he may be messed up for. You know he does mention Spice Dream. Maybe he gets all messed up on Spice or something. And he well maybe that's how he recovered. Maybe that's how he had all the the pain from the recovery. And he was just medicinal all spice. spiced up. Yeah, yeah, he's all spiced up. So maybe he was out of commission for a year or two. Garbodite Chronicles continues. Season two does not disappoint. Yeah, and I tell you what, it's I will I'm going on record here saying that in 2019 and this year, the the holiday season, November to December, it's like when Mandalorian comes out, every Friday is like Christmas morning. You wake up and there's like a new present under the tree. So, and Since Jared to Jared. Yeah, to Jared. From hey, look, Kath- here's from here's Kathleen Boba Fett. Kennedy. Here's Boba Fett. So, The Mandalorian is officially some of the, it's, for me, in my opinion, the best Star Wars since the original trilogy. And I think this episode completely cemented that for me. I think you you have the original trilogy. You've got Rogue One as a fantastic Star Wars movie, and you've got The Mandalorian. Yeah, it's like this a it's, it's like an inclusive little mm-hmm. vibe. And with a lot of people give Disney a lot of crap, but I gotta give it to them. This they're behind the creation of The Mandalorian, and it's some of the best Star Wars there's ever been. Period. It's all about the right people. The right people are in the right place making this show. And uh, we've said it before. So, you know, John Favreau and Dave Filoni spearheading this endeavor have done uh, the fans some great service. So I think yeah. the, I think there needs to be a puck put out on Kathleen Kennedy. That's all I'm saying. Oh, damn. All right. On that note, we're going to uh, we're going to wrap up and uh, we'll be back every Friday. There's a Mandalorian episode dropping our comments and our discussion on the episode. So heck yeah. Lucky, lucky people. Come back Listen next week and we're going to see we're going to see what happens. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. You know you can't live without this content, so subscribe to The Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century. Follow us on social media. Leave us a review. 
and join us here next time as we take you into the 25th century.